You're watching News 3, the Southern Illinois News Leader, live from WSIL-TV in high definition. News 3 starts right now. Good evening. It has been a day many of us will never forget. We have a full half hour of eclipse coverage coming up. We had an incredible view from the station. News 3 digital producer Corey Ray captured this photo at the moment of totality. Now, as I said, we have extensive coverage of the moments before, during, and after the total solar eclipse. We begin in Union County. People from across the globe arrived in Macanda to take in the eclipse. They came from London, Switzerland, Hawaii, and across the U.S. News 3's Hannah Gabrielassi caught up with a group of eclipse hunters from Spain. There were tears, there was laughter, and many, many new memories for the visitors that came to Macanda for the total solar eclipse. And one group who came all the way from Spain says this is a memory they will carry with them for the rest of their lives. Macanda, Illinois experienced the longest point of totality. That's the reason why Blue Sky Winery grew full with visitors from all over the world. This group of 48 traveled all the way from Spain to catch the big moment. Millions of emotions for us. So really, really enjoy it and fantastic. These people are part of an astronomy group called Agrupación Astronómica de Sabadell. They call themselves amateurs who love studying astronomy. Considerem que és un punt extraordinari per poder veure un eclipse fantàstic. And this year uh, we choose uh, this place because we believe that uh, this is an awesome place to watch the clips. Some of the members have seen more than a dozen eclipses and they say the feeling is magical every time. So it's something that astonishing that yes, uh, we are very passionate about it. Uh, we came in from Barcelona and Catalonia and coming here to see uh, this uh, fantastic, exciting, exciting. The group says they plan to take what they've learned back home and share it at a conference. Until then, they've got a new memory to keep them smiling. Fantastic. So they said real exciting for me and uh, everybody here. Regardless of where the visitors came from, they're all leaving Blue Sky with memories to last them a lifetime. Reporting from Macanda, Hannah Gabber Selassie, News 3. Also in Union County, we took our drone Sky 3 up to get an aerial look of folks gathered at Ball Knob Cross in Alto Pass. Hundreds of people took in the view at that location and the excitement wasn't all eclipse related. Ethan Haney of Vienna decided to use the once in a lifetime experience to propose to his girlfriend, Alexis McCraw of Ozark. And if you're wondering, she said yes. It has been a hot and humid day for Eclipse viewers. Here's Nick with Weather First. That it has. An extraordinary event, whether you traveled all the way to Southern Illinois to see this or whether you were someone who just got to see this in their backyard. For us here at the station, we've been actually watching satellite for much of the day, something we've never, never actually experienced here. Visible satellite, we've been bragging on this satellite for months, but there's the moon's shadow actually making its way across the Earth. Again, moving at around 16 hundred miles an hour. Now some of us had great viewing conditions. Others had to deal with a little bit of clouds. Some of those clouds actually even producing a few showers and storms as an outflow boundary pushes in from the north right now. One of those storms moving right down I-64 and really the strongest part of the storm just to the north and east of Nashville. And you can see lots of lightning in addition to the possibility of some strong winds and even some small hail embedded in that. Continuing to push off to the east. These are moving at about 20 miles an hour. Just not moving very fast. Lots of very heavy rain. So if you happen to be traveling this evening, be aware we're going to have some scattered showers and storms around. Outside of the storms, it has been hot. It has been humid. Temperatures right now in the low 90s. You factor in that humidity. Heat index values have been between 100 and 105 degrees this afternoon. Isolated storms remain possible tonight. Another cold front arrives tomorrow, though, and brings us some big time relief later this week. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. To Williamson County now, where thousands packed into Walker's Bluff to see Ozzy Osbourne sing Bark at the Moon during the eclipse. News 3's Ronnie LaForge was there as well and talked with concert goers right after totality. She joins us from Moonstock at Walker's Bluff. Ronnie, were people impressed with the show? 
Mark, they absolutely were. And when Ozzy actually came out on the stage, the crowd broke through a fence that was blocking off the VIP area. Now, concert goers I spoke with say that Ozzy was just absolutely incredible and the only man for the job. And they say that this entire experience exceeded their expectations. It was the moment everyone was waiting for. Jackie Simon says Ozzy didn't disappoint. She's seen him in concert before, but says the eclipse made for a show unlike anything she's ever seen. It's one of those moments where you don't want to bring your phone out, you just want to experience it. John Robinson and his girlfriend Charlotte traveled from Chicago and said the four days of camping, the heat, and the crowds were worth it to see the eclipse and Ozzy all in one place. It left them really speechless. Description. I, I, could, I can't explain it. It was amazing. Super fan Harry Klein says he's lost track of how many Aussie concerts he's seen, but said he knew he had to travel to southern Illinois from up near Chicago to be part of this once in a lifetime concert. So, does this beat out all of the other Aussie concerts that you've been to? Yeah, by far. Never been to a concert with a clip. Jackie says being part of an event like this isn't something she'll forget either. She says all their time spent driving and stuck in long lines were worth it. Yeah, we stayed in a hotel, but we had to get one all the way in Kentucky because they were booked up. A large portion of the crowds actually cleared out when Ozzy was done performing, but they also, I mean, but many of the performers, I'm sorry, many of the fans here to see the performers actually went over to another stage to see two more bands perform. For now, live at Moonstock, Ronnie LaForge, News 3. Much quieter there now. In Marion, the 4-H Club of Illinois set up a science fair around the concourse at Rent One Park. More than a thousand people packed into the, to the park to witness the eclipse on a baseball diamond. As News 3's Sean Conway shows us, many traveled great distances to experience totality. Nearly 1,500 people made their way down to Marion today, many of whom who traveled hundreds of miles just to view the total solar eclipse at Rent One Park. James Bernaghi and his family drove down from the Chicago suburbs when he found out he wouldn't be able to see the total eclipse with his classmates back home. There was a field trip to go see the eclipse, obviously, but then my teacher says we're only going to see it partial, and I'm like, well, I want to see the whole thing. Science and math has always interested James, and that's why his family chose Rent One Park to view the eclipse, where the 4-H club held a science fair during the event. Well, Miners has always been a good partner for the southern region and what we do here with 4-H in the southern part of our state. So they contacted us and we thought this would be a great venue to celebrate this phenomenon that we're having today. James adds that he was excited to view the eclipse in a unique way. Uh, lots of times, one, when I'm on a baseball field, it's usually just after a game and we're running the bases. And Something when this happens, maybe it happened 30 years ago, and it may not happen for the rest of my life. So kind of want to take advantage of this chance. James says he hopes to be able to return in seven years to see it happen again. Many in attendance at Rem One Park say the chance to view the total solar eclipse at the ballpark is a unique way to experience history. In Marion, Sean Conway, News 3. Now, officials warned of potential traffic backups today. The influx of visitors brought traffic to a standstill on many major roadways and side roads in southern Illinois, especially after the eclipse event. This is Interstate 57 right now in Mount Vernon. As you can see from our weather cam, the mass exodus to leave southern Illinois now continues. There have been reports of crashes along the interstate. We will have updates with more information as they become available. News 3's Tia Reinhardt is in Carbondale, where traffic is also delayed. Tia, what's going on there? Well, Mark, we headed towards Carbondale around 2 p.m. just after totality, where 
traffic from Carterville to Carbondale past intersection. This intersection where we're standing right now eastbound. It was completely bumper to bumper moving extremely slowly and it, it was that way for hours and we actually stood here so that you guys could get a good view of Route 13 and that traffic back up. But that's how live TV works and just minutes ago actually um, that traffic started moving more swiftly and it's cleared up right here at this intersection. But about an hour ago on Southern Illinois fire incidents page, first responders reported a traffic crash here on Giant City Road and combined with construction down near the intersection of Giant City and Pleasant Hill Road, both were nearly at a standstill. Also, first responders reported a three car crash on McClafferty Road where the northbound lane was blocked off near Chautauqua Road. Down further where Giant City turns more rural, you'll find northbound traffic pretty backed up still. Now, the traffic is pretty heavy here at the intersection because of the two major viewing points for totality here in Jackson County over at Carbondale with SIU and Shadowfest and then down at Mercanda and Giant City State Park. That's where most of these visitors are meeting to hop to Marion and hop on to I-57. Live in Carbondale, Tia Reinhart, News 3. Coming up, we're going to head back to Jackson County where News 3's Brandon Richard has reaction from downtown Carbondale. You're watching News 3 with Mark Kiesling, meteorologist Jim Razor, and sports with Darren Kennard. A truly memorable event today for locals and those traveling to the area to see the total eclipse. Large crowds descended on downtown Carbondale, many people coming from several hours away to take in the event. News 3's Brandon Richard introduces us to some of those who made the long trek for an experience they'll never forget. Before the moon's shadow swept across southern Illinois, Jacqueline Berg and her husband took in the sights and sounds of downtown Carbondale, a trip they had been planning for months. That's all he wanted for his 50th birthday, was to see the eclipse. The Louisiana couple among hundreds who traveled all night and spent the morning filtering through local businesses like Mary Lou's, where the line stretched out the door. We're very, very excited to be here. Yeah. This party of five arrived last night from Chicago, and what they call a last minute trip downstate. Everyone says it's something that once you see it, it's amazing. This is very exciting to see a whole eclipse. Outside Mary Lou's, we ran into someone else excited to see the eclipse, Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner. This is celebrating a historic day. We've got hundreds of thousands of visitors here to Southern Illinois. We're encouraging everybody to come on out, enjoy the shops, the restaurants, incredible parks. And as the all important hour neared, People like John and Regina King of Phoenix, Arizona, set up camp in any public space they could find. It's just one of those phenomena that we can't explain, really. And then it happened. As darkness descended, the stubborn clouds made it hard to actually see the corona of the sun. But even that couldn't eclipse an experience out of this world. Newsly's Brandon Richard reporting from downtown Carbondale. In Goreville, people from as far away as Italy, Panama, and Poland were among the nearly 5,000 people that packed into the Village Park. Leading up to totality, professors and students from the University of Illinois explained the science behind the eclipse. They also provided special solar protected telescopes for people to look at the sun. And then darkness as visitors and locals alike both stared in wonder at the sun's corona. It's indescribable. I mean, you really can't until you just live through it to describe what it is. Uh, you see pictures, but it's not like pictures just can't capture it. Many visitors say they were impressed with the small town's management of the event and say they'll probably be back for the next eclipse in 2024. All eyes were on the sky today, and most of us had a clear view of the eclipse, but what will the weather hold for the rest of the week? 
Nick's forecast next. Putting accuracy first, this is News 3 weather. Some of us got a real nice view this afternoon of the solar eclipse. Others had to deal with clouds, even a few showers and thunderstorms around. And yeah, we're still dealing with some of those scattered storms, mainly along the I-64 corridor, but there are some, a couple of some pretty strong storms. One of these actually moving out of Washington County and just starting to move into Jefferson County. And there's I-64 there. You can see Richview back towards Ashley. And we can see a lot of lightning, some very heavy rain. And when you start to see this purple color show up on radar near Ashley, you may even start to see some small hail. These are going to continue to push to the east. Really, the core of this cell may make it over towards Woodlawn and eventually over near Mount Vernon. Also, and again, very, very heavy rain, frequent lightning, some small hail, possibly even some gusty winds. So be aware of that. Dix, Texaco, you're likely going to see this as well. Elsewhere across southern Illinois, a very hot, very humid day. Live look right now in Harrisburg, and hard to believe it can be raining in some areas. In other areas like this, lots of sunshine around, the cumulus clouds around. Temperature there at the airport, 92 degrees. Dew points in the mid-70s. And it didn't take long to sweat this afternoon. Again, heat index values running in the low 100s. Winds have generally been pretty light out of the south southwest. Temperatures elsewhere, we see 91 in Cape, 87 with some of the cloud cover right now with that storm in Mount Vernon, 87 in Carbondale, 91 in Paducah, the warm spot on the map, Sykeston currently at 95. Heat index values between 100 and 105 degrees, though, across much of the region. Dew points again in the mid to upper 70s. That is some very, very muggy air. Good news, though, it's not going to last much longer. Tomorrow, still a very humid day, but a cold front moves through the rest of the week. Looks much more pleasant, so something to look forward to here as we make our way towards the middle of the week. Again, we'll continue to track these showers and storms, mainly in our northern counties. Won't be surprised to see some of this activity push a little further to the south. The actual cold front still well to our north and west. It doesn't arrive around here until tomorrow afternoon. Skycast picking up on the scattered showers and storms out there this afternoon. Tomorrow morning, though, as the front begins to approach, we're going to see chances for showers and storms go up. Right now, I think the best chance of rain all day, likely coming midday and throughout the afternoon hours, those skycast pushes that through just a little too early. Cold front arrives later in the day, and again, behind that, we do expect some much cooler air on the way. And by Wednesday, we're talking about clearing skies and temperatures very, very cool for this time of year. Again, best chances for rain in southern Illinois tomorrow, likely coming mid to late morning and then throughout the afternoon and then starting to taper off towards the later part of the evening. And again, we'll start off very mild, low 70s. We'll actually likely hit our high temperature just ahead of the showers and storms. And then temps actually may drop as we start to see some of that rain cooled air move on through. But look behind this front. This is Wednesday afternoon with some sunshine out there. Temperatures not even breaking 80 degrees by Thursday morning. We're talking upper 50s around here. That is almost unheard of when we start to get into the later part of August. I know we've been so focused on the eclipse forecast for here for mm -hmm. about a week or so, mm -hmm. but beyond it, very comfortable. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Nick. Well, when the sky went dark this afternoon, you may have felt a drop in temperature, but how far did it fall? News 3's meteorologist Rachel Dunsing collected the data and shares her findings. One of the common questions that we got when preparing for the total solar eclipse was exactly how much the temperature is going to drop when the sun was completely covered up by the moon. So for science, I am taking this data logger and I'm actually going to sit it out during the total solar eclipse so we know exactly how much the temperature drops when the sun is eclipsed by the moon. Since a more accurate temperature reading comes from a sensor being a little farther off the ground, I tape the sensor onto this pole, and then with the pressing of a button, it started collecting data. After nearly two hours of taking temperature and humidity readings every 45 seconds, it was time to look at the results. Before the partial phases of the eclipse, the afternoon high rose to nearly 92 degrees, but right after totality, the temperature dropped to 87 degrees, a five degree temperature difference. I really hope you got the chance to enjoy the total solar eclipse and through the partial phases and even throughout totality, this data logger was collecting data. And even though we only experienced a five degree drop in temperatures without the sun blaring down on you, at least felt a little bit more comfortable. In Carterville, Rachel Dunzing, News 3. Coming up, we'll take you back to Carbondale where NASA decided to set up for viewing. Stay with us.
In Carbondale, thousands happened to be in the right place at the wrong time. Clouds crept over Saluki Stadium just as the totality of the eclipse began. News 3's Carolyn Serta was at the stadium all day where 14,000 people packed in along with folks from NASA. From early Monday morning, excitement filled Saluki Stadium. Eclipse enthusiasts thrilled for the chance to view the first total solar eclipse in America this century. It's uh, two minutes and 40 seconds of absolute incredible emotions. <laughs> As the anticipation started to build, so did the cloud cover. It's great that you call it a buildup because it was a buildup in water vapor. <laughs> a huge cloud covering the eclipse during totality. So yeah. the two minutes and 40 seconds that we should have been able to see it from here. We got about a couple of seconds. <laughs> Sten Odenwald with NASA knew early on there was a chance this could happen when we spoke early in the morning. In fact, it's getting dark now already. Oh, that's a cloud. Uh oh. No clouds allowed. His foreshadow becoming a reality for the 14,000 people in these stands in Carbondale. I'm really excited because this is like it's totality, and this hasn't ha this doesn't really happen in a long time. Puneet Opal and his sons traveling from Chicago, bypassing major cities, banking on a clear view here. But this is our first eclipse at Carbondale, the center for totality. And we were looking also at the weather, you know, and we found that Carbondale had the better weather than even Missouri. But the Opals and everyone else here didn't leave disappointed. It was, it was exciting. I mean, I'd never seen anything quite this close to full eclipse in my life. We got to see the partial phases. We got to see the sun literally disappear as a little tiny sliver and then boop, it was gone. And if it's up to the folks at NASA. We got a 50-50 chance for the next one and we just blew the 50 bad percentage points on this one. So the next one's going to be a success, right? That's optimistic. That was News 3's Carolyn Serta reporting from Saluki Stadium in Carbondale. And social media played a big part in eclipse coverage today, allowing people to share their eclipse experience with others across the globe. Check out this photo the Associated Press tweeted out of St. Louis, a multiple exposure of the eclipse traveling over the St. Louis Arch. We will have a final check of weather when we come back. Nick's back now with an update on some storms in the northern part of our viewing area. Yeah, right along I-64. In fact, some stronger storms moving through that area right now as well. Some of these bringing very heavy rain, a lot of lightning, and one of those getting ready to move right into Mount Vernon. Again, this is moving right down I-64, only moving at about 20 miles an hour, but the strongest part of this storm cell is going to pass almost right on top of Woodlawn. Give you some times there on estimates on when that could arrive into the Mount Vernon area. Again, we could see some gusty winds, even some small hail. I know we're dealing with a lot of traffic up that way. This is a live look right now, looking back to the north as that storm begins to approach. All right, thank you, Nick. The news continues. World News Tonight with David Muir is coming up next.